This is really weird. I've got a new camera and the flip out screen is to the side rather than up. So you see me veering off to the right, which I know is very infuriating when you're watching vlogs and people look at themselves rather than down the lens. But yeah, if I veer off, it's because it's just there. But I'm gonna try my best to look down the lens. Um, welcome to another weekly vlog. It's been a while, hasn't it? I think it's been at least three weeks since I've filmed an at home vlog for sure. I think the Scotland vlog was two weeks ago. So yeah, three weeks since I've done this kind of vlog. I apologise greatly for the unprecedented hiatus that happened there. Sometimes weeks just don't go to plan and things don't get vlogged and that happened for two weeks straight which I just didn't expect to happen. Um, but one smashed iPhone and one broken vlog camera later I am back and I'm coming to you from a different, a, new, a brand new vlog camera. I think when the Canon G7X, which is what I was using, broke, I realised that the camera was just more of a hindrance than a help and I was not enjoying using it, so I decided to switch to a Sony camera, which is all very new and shiny and exciting. I can already tell though that I'm missing the colour grading that you get with a Canon camera, but I'm hoping in the long run this is much more beneficial because it films in 4K video. This whole camera, it's called the ZV-1, I think this whole camera has been developed purely just for the purpose of vlogging. So I'm hoping in the long run this is way better. It has a microphone, which was quite a big selling point for me because the Canon G7X doesn't have that, uh, which I find quite annoying because a lot of footage was very echoey. They're all very small things that as a viewer you wouldn't notice, but for me as a creator were bugging me. So I felt like it was time for me to try a new camera. So yeah, just bear with me while I figure out how to use this. Uh, I'm not sure how this footage is going to look or how this entire vlog is going to look, but we shall see. So yes, I am feeling actually really, really good having had two weeks off. Even though it wasn't planned, I feel like I'm back feeling way more driven to just basically continue what I'm doing. I didn't have a crisis or anything like that. I think I... I've never been bored of vlogging, I, I really enjoy vlogging, but as a from a creative standpoint, I think I was feeling like each week putting the vlogs together was maybe a little bit unfulfilling creatively, and I was running out of ways to, I guess, make each week feel different, because the reality of it is that my weeks are very repetitive, I am very stuck in routine, as many of us have been most of this year. The reality of it is, is that lots of us are at home most of the time doing the same thing week in week out and I had this huge worry that it was becoming really quite unappealing to watch um, because it felt slightly unappealing to create but I've had so many messages and I continued you know throughout this whole year I've had so many messages from people saying that they've found so much comfort in watching the vlogs they've been a real sense of calm when people have been having a bad day you know when they've their mental health hasn't been great so it really brings me quite a lot of joy when I read comments like that and it really warms my heart and it makes me realize that I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and I need to just let the vlogs be what they're going to be and not worry about what they could be because the reality of it is is this how this the, the the reason i'm doing this is because this is a true representation of how my weeks are at the moment um they might change they might not change but i need to not focus on trying to make them change or trying to make them out to be something that they're not so this isn't me coming back after two weeks off saying i've got loads of ideas and i'm going to change things up because i'm not i think i just needed that kind of like i needed to Oh my god, my tummy is rumbling. I don't know if you just heard that. The microphone might have picked that up. I just needed to kind of like reaffirm with myself that what I'm doing is fine. It's completely fine. And someone out there will enjoy watching it. So I'm not coming to you with any new ideas or anything. I'm just coming back with a feeling, a much more driven feeling, which brings me on to the wardrobe review series, which you will... Some of you might have seen, noticed I changed the name of when I started it, I called it Investment Purchases, 
which didn't sit right with me, but I kind of panicked and didn't know what to call them. So called the video series investment purchases, which I just didn't like. And then wardrobe review came to my mind after a few suggestions from um, some people. And I was like, yes, that's so much better. So I'm going to resurrect that series for sure. Um, I think from a moral standpoint, I also was feeling a bit insecure about it because at a time like this, I just didn't want to be creating things that felt a bit sort of like hall-like or that kind of hall culture of really encouraging people to shop. But in hindsight, when I look at the concept, I see it more of as a tool rather than an encouragement to get people to shop. Because in this industry, in this influencer culture and a lot of people like myself um, in this industry, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not including myself in this, but it's rare that you, that, that people are honest about the quality of things and give an honest review to these like hype items and things. So I actually see it as just like a tool for people who are genuinely quite interested in why I like something and why I don't like something. I'm not saying go out and buy it. I'm just kind of giving you my honest opinion. Um, the, I've rambled on for six minutes. This is such a hefty intro to a vlog, so I do apologise. I should, I'm, I'm terrible at this kind of thing. This week, I don't have anything that interesting planned. I've got a lot of admin to do this week. Uh, so, but I do want to do a kind of like post Scotland review, like a, a catch up. I also want to talk about bullet journaling because I've got quite back into that. And I think I've got some beauty bits to chat about because I've been doing some beauty shopping. So I will, uh, let's just see where this week goes really. <laughs> This setup is going to look really weird, but sometimes when I want to take close-up shots of things that I'm wearing against a white background, I prop our old mirror up against the bed. So I can just shoot straight into this mirror and I'll have a plain background. I've just been sat at my computer watching a few kind of like digital press events because this time of year is normally the time in which brands release like new collections, new products ready for autumn, winter and Christmas, but obviously, we can't go to like physical press events so lots of brands are doing some online things and I just watched a really really like kind of engaging virtual oh the sun's just come out there virtual presentation from Aesop and they are finally launching candles which is really exciting because I know so many people out there will have been waiting eagerly for Aesop to go into the, the candle market. And this Christmas they are. They're starting with three fragrances. I can't remember exactly what they were. And obviously I didn't get to smell them because it was all a digital virtual thing. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you what I've been lounging around in this morning because I received this jumper from a brand called Riley Studio a couple of days ago. And it's so cozy and just such a lovely jumper. And the brand is a really interesting brand because they are obviously, I say obviously as if people would know, but they are striving to be a sustainable brand. They're very transparent, but they're also striving to be a gender fluid brand. So nothing is, there's no like woman or man category. Everything is just on the website in one category with gender neutral sizing. So there's not like, there's not extra small to extra large. It's a number system. Um, and this jumper in particular is made from 95% recycled cashmere and 5% merino wool and it's made in Scotland and then I think I was reading that the yarn comes from Italy and the mill is in Italy as well and I just wanted to share because I think it's such a nice jumper it's got a very subtle marl to it which is what you do get when you mix different uh, wool blends, I guess. And then I'm just wearing some cashmere joggers, which are from a cashmere brand called La Cacha. 
I'm wearing a shirt today and I feel incredibly smart. I don't remember the last time I wore a shirt. I feel like I've lived in either jumpers or t-shirts for months now, but I thought putting a shirt on might subconsciously encourage me to be really productive today. I'm sure there's some psychology in how getting dressed relates to your productivity, maybe. It certainly made me feel a lot better already. Has anyone watched, I'm just going to try and talk to you while I do my makeup actually, has anyone watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix? We finished watching it last night and wow. I've got some serious, serious trust issues with social media after watching that. Last year, I watched a programme called The Great Hack, which is kind of in a similar vein to The Social Dilemma. It focuses on Cambridge Analytica and the way in which they basically harvested people's data and fed it back to them in a way that, I guess, manipulated the way in which people voted in the US election. And I also think they did, I think they did something during the Brexit campaign as well. It's actually quite terrifying to watch. I would, I mean, it's akin to a horror movie. It's, it's that scary. It spoke a lot about how they did that through Facebook and Twitter, I think. And since then, I've really, really limited my Facebook use. Actually, I I probably started limiting my Facebook use around sort of like 2013, 2014, and I now go on them maybe like two, three times a month, only to literally check in, see what friends and family around the world are up to, just see what pictures they've uploaded. And that's pretty much it. I don't consume any news, I don't click on any links, I don't take in any targeted adverts or anything like that. I just get in and get back out again because I know how dangerous Facebook is as a social media app. So The Social Dilemma interviews, the people who made the documentary interview former employees of Instagram, Twitter, Google, uh, Facebook, and I th actually think there is a guy on there who formerly was from Pinterest, but that the guy who invented the infinite scroll is on there, the guy who invented the like button is on there. You know, these are pivotal people who have made significant, um, I guess, developments in social media over the past few years. But because they're all former employees, it's a proper sort of lifting the lid style documentary, and it will shock you and it will leave you just your kind of eyes completely opened. They speak a lot about um, how harmful social media is and what goes on behind the scenes when they are creating algorithms and just the way in which your data is used and the way in which they use you as a person basically it's very interesting if you're quite interested in like the way an algorithm works and um just how harmful an algorithm can be and how more and more harmful algorithms will get and how more and more harmful social media will get it talks a lot about how kind of like fake news is generated and circulated online and how just divisive that can be and how dangerous that is. It, it's a real eye-opener as to how you, how these companies are using, I think they use the term persuasive technology, and how they're weaponizing technology to get you to stay on your screen as long as possible. And in a way, trying to like divide us, it's just I mean, I'm not educated enough to talk about it whatsoever. I think it's best that I leave it to the the, um, the experts on the programme. But it's just, yeah, highly recommend that to anyone who wants something to watch and who's just interested in... I mean, if you really want to watch something that's going to scare you into not using social media as much, then The Social Dilemma is that programme. And right at the very end, when the credits are rolling, something that my, the, I think the most telling bit of the entire program was they um, asked all the interviewees, do they allow their children to use social media? And not a single one of them said yes. So these are people who have worked for these huge, huge companies and have seen the ins and outs. They've seen the behind the scenes. 
and they are saying that they will not allow their children to use those applications. I mean, need I say any more? It, I mean, I, in the past sort of two to three months, I have tried to limit the way, limit my social media usage and the way in which I consume the information I see on there. It is, I take a lot of it with a pinch of salt and it requires, because there's no policing. And I think that's a, a huge talking point in the social dilemma is that there is absolutely no rules and regulations and there is no policing to anything that is happening behind the scenes at these companies and in social media. And knowing that makes me more and more conscious of how much I use social media and the way in which I use it. I try and reduce how much I go on Twitter because I think Twitter is one of the worst for it and anything that I see kind of doing the rounds on Instagram I take with a pinch of salt and really try and do some fact checking before I share anything basically. So yeah, if you want something new to watch, definitely, definitely recommend The Social Dilemma. I think it will definitely leave you feeling like you want to delete every single app on your phone. Just a quick PSA to anyone who is around 5'3 to 5'5. Five five. I have found some very good trousers that I think you will like. A lot of people ask me where do I find black tailored trousers from and to be honest I never have a straightforward answer because it's so much of trial and error and I'd say 80% of the time they require tailoring. Unfortunately these are from Arquette and I know that Arquette don't ship that widely which is really infuriating because they're part of the H&M group and obviously H&M ships worldwide and I'm pretty sure Cos ships quite broadly but yeah Arquette doesn't seem to ship that far at the moment so I'm really sorry I know how annoying it is I get quite a few messages from people saying they're gutted that Arquette isn't available where they live it's it is really frustrating I know so um, I'm sorry in advance but they are a very good pair of trousers they are called the barrel leg trouser which the name barrel leg normally puts the fear in me because any trousers I've tried in the past that have this kind of shape to them don't sit in the, the like the barrel doesn't sit in the correct place and looks really just disproportionate on my height it just doesn't work but these I noticed were really really cropped on the model and normally if trousers are really cropped on the model it's a green light for me because they will be a regular length on me and I was right. These hit me just above the ankle. I'm 5'3", just for reference, and I got these in a size 34. They are a polyester and wool blend, so they're quite thick. They're, they're a really good trouser, I think, for going into autumn, winter. But as you can see, they, they're they a really good fit, and the barrel is really subtle. It's not that wide. It also sits in the correct place. And yeah, I'm I'm really, really pleased with these. I quite like these as an alternative to your standard straight leg trouser. They just add a little bit of interest that I think, especially when you're playing with volume up top, it's quite interesting to play with the shape of your trousers as well. I am very minimal, as you know, like I keep things very, very minimal. And there are times when I bore myself getting dressed, I'll put on a pair of like straight leg black trousers and a shirt and I will be bored with it. So I think this these kind of just add enough interest to an outfit without having to like stray really far into something that doesn't feel very me. <clears throat> Excuse me. These still feel very me, but they just add a point of interest, I guess, to an outfit that could otherwise be slightly dull or look a little bit corporate. I've just paired them with this the shirt that you would have seen in the clip earlier. This is like a, it's showing up very orange on camera, but it's much more of a camel color. This is also Arquette. This was, I think last year or maybe the year before. So yeah, just anyone who does shop Arquette and is around the same height as me, definitely check these out. They don't look much on the website. They, they actually are styled in, like they're not styled in a great way either. So they look very underwhelming, but when I put them on, I was very pleasantly surprised. I like it when I can just put on a pair of trousers and I'm ready to go. They're, they don't require a belt. Although, you know, I do wear a belt, but you know what I mean. I'm waffling on now. Bye. <laughs> I'm really sorry.
sorry if you can hear the rain right now, it has chucked it down all day, torrential rain all day, and it is forecast torrential rain for the next three days or something ludicrous like that. And I've tried every room I've been into, you can hear the rain. So I've sat down where the light is best at the moment and I've put that little fluffy thing over the top of the microphone, I don't know what the technical term is, in the hope that that will slightly muffle the sound of the rain. But I will also try and talk loud enough so that you can't hear the rain. But yeah, I'm sorry about that. This is going to be my post Scotland review, kind of. Just gonna talk about a few things that I found really, really helpful and handy on the trip. And then some things that weren't so helpful, just in case any of you are going on a camping or a camper van trip or some sort of road trip anytime soon. I thought this might be quite helpful. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the Lush shampoo and conditioning bars. These were brilliant. Uh, the reason I brought these, I mentioned this in a vlog just before we went, was I wanted to reduce the amount of like heavy packaging and liquids I was travelling with because we flew from Stansted to Edinburgh and so automatically I wanted to travel as light as possible. So in an order to reduce the amount of bulky bottles I took with me, I bought these little shampoo and conditioning bars from Lush. They are super light, they're very small, they're really, really good to travel with, and they're actually a really good product as well. I've continued to use these since getting home from Scotland. I really, really like them as an everyday shampoo and conditioner. Whilst we were traveling, I kept them in this cotton bag from Aesop, which was okay, but it got a bit messy and obviously got very wet. I would recommend storing these in, you know those padded, bags that Glossier send their products out in, maybe something like that, like a, a Ziploc bag, basically something that's waterproof and easy to clean because this was quite manky towards the end of the trip. So yeah, can't recommend these enough. I can't remember the exact ones I bought. There was a blue one, a cream one, pink shampoo, I, I'll leave links below. The next thing also from Lush is this body lotion bar, which is great. I started using it a few days before we left. It's basically just a bar that you rub on your skin and it's, you know, it's a solid moisturiser. What I didn't realise about this was it only really works best when it's at room temperature or slightly warmed up. So the morning after our first night in the camper van, a slightly cold night in the camper van, I woke up to find that this was stone cold and completely solid. It I, like, I tried to rub it on my skin and it actually just hurt, like the friction was awful. Tried to warm it up in my hot water bottle, that kind of worked but not very well. So unfortunately I didn't get to use this that much whilst I was on the trip because it just never really got warm enough, there was never that room temperature for it to um, function properly at. But it is a great product to travel with and a great product to reduce your packaging, I guess. So maybe if you're going on a trip in a slightly warmer climate, this might be for you. But here in the UK, especially as it gets colder now, something to bear in mind if you're thinking about getting this to travel with. Moving on to slightly more practical things. Head torch. This was Dean's idea. I was like, I don't think we'll really need a head torch, but how wrong I was. Head torch is brilliant if you need the toilet in the middle of the night, obviously. A head torch is just brilliant for anything that you need to get done when it's dark, basically, especially because it allows you to be hands-free. These particular ones that Dean bought, I can't remember where he bought these from. These might have been from Go Outdoors. A lot of the stuff that we bought for the trip was from Go Outdoors. We did like a recce and just thought, right, let's just buy it all from Go Outdoors. But these particular ones, you can charge through a USB port, which is really handy because our camper van had quite a few USB ports in actually. So yes, a head torch is a must. The next practical thing was the midge net, which is only really applicable, I guess, if you're in Scotland, specifically the west of Scotland. And actually I think towards middle of October, they start to go away but it's a handy thing to travel with if you are going to the west of Scotland, regardless of the time of year. I mean, they're tiny. This thing packs up into this small little bag, so it's not like they're heavy or take up much room. But it's literally a net that you put over your head, just tighten at the bottom there, and you're done. I mean, it does feel quite bizarre, and you do look quite 
comical, but when we got to the fairy pools, it was like a, it looked like rain, but it was actually midges and it was unbearable. So we felt quite smug with these on, especially when you're just surrounded by people who are trying to bat them away and you're just there with a lot of care in the world, enjoying the uh, waterfalls. Very, very good purchase. And actually another thing when I was like, I don't think we'll need those Dean. But again, how wrong I was. I kind of thought, I'm, I didn't think they'd, I thought they'd be bad, but I didn't think they'd be that bad that I need to put a net over my head. But if the conditions are right for the midges, they are brutal. They do not let up. Uh, I'll move on to clothing now because I had a few good, made a few good purchases in the clothing department. The first being a base layer. I cannot recommend a base layer enough, especially again if you're in the UK and you're going on a trip now it's getting colder you will need a base layer. This particular one is from a brand called OEX. This again was from Go Outdoors. You just want a layer that's really, really tight so it acts like a second skin basically and keeps you warm. I think they say it's best to get one that's made from merino wool, but mine was made from bamboo, I think. Yeah, mine's bamboo. And it kept me warm, it was really, really good. It, I wore this every single day and then I wore a long sleeve, like a baggy long sleeve Carhartt t-shirt over the top along with my fleece. And those three layers was all I really needed. And this was, I felt, I really felt the difference with this when it was windy or in the evening as it got colder. This was so, so good. Um, so talking of fleece, I will move on to my Patagonia fleece, which looks like this. So this is a men's Patagonia fleece. I bought it from a shop uh, like local to me, like an independent shop that unfortunately doesn't sell women's Patagonia. So I thought, well, I can just wear a men's one. Mine is a size, I went for a size small. I probably could have done with an extra small, but they didn't have extra small in stock. But the small was fine. It just was just ever so slightly oversized. I went for a half zip as opposed to a full zip because I find half zips more comfortable especially if you're if you want to maybe tuck your fleece into something a full zip can be a little bit uncomfortable with a half zip you've just got like the soft fabric so it's much easier to tuck in this was brilliant again I wore this pretty much every single day it's fleece lined obviously it's a fleece and it was just so cozy it like it was brilliant and so like I said, I wore this with a long sleeve top underneath and then my base layer. And if it was raining or exceptionally cold, that was when my barber came into play. So I think so many people ask me about this. It is, actually I'll put it on, it might be easier if I put it on. So I bought it about, I brought it about six or seven years ago on eBay and it's a men's barber. It's called the Barber Bedale. That's the actual model name of the jacket. And I'm wearing a size, I think it's a 32. Yeah, chest 32. So if you're a similar build to me and you want to look for this specific jacket, look for a 32 or maybe a 34. I am roughly like a, a size six and could easily fit my Patagonia fleece underneath this with layers underneath the fleece as well. It, um, this acted basically as my, my waterproof jacket for the trip. Dean very kindly, bless him, re-waxed it just before we left. And although barbers don't feel like they'll be waterproof, but they are fully waterproof. I wore this when we went to the ferry pools and it ended up raining quite a bit. And I got absolutely soaked, but I was bone dry underneath this jacket. So if you are interested in buying a barber, especially if you're buying secondhand, I would really, really recommend just re-waxing it before you go on a trip because you want it to be fully waterproof. So this is how it looks. There's a lot of pockets. You've got two really deep pockets here. There's a pocket on the inside here. There's, it has like a double zip. So you've got the inner zip here. I don't know if you can see that. You've got the inner zip here and then you've got that zip. And then you can button up over the zips. This exact color, I think, is sage. It's either sage or olive and it's got the brown corduroy detail on it. 
if you are interested in buying a barber, I highly recommend going on eBay because there's so many of them on there. And barbers are the type of jackets that just, they, they don't date and although they age, all you have to do is re-wax it and it looks brand new. And actually I think they get better with age. I don't like the way a barber looks when it's brand new because it's super shiny and just feels really crisp. I mean, this, like I said, is probably, I don't know how old this is. I mean, I've had it for six or seven years, but before me, I don't know how long its life had been. And it's just super like soft and it's really worn in. And um, yeah, I just, I love it so much. It's one of those pieces that I will never ever let go. And it's just so practical. It keeps you warm as well. It's quite well um, like insulated and layered. And it's just like an all-round very good jacket so I highly recommend. I did take a poncho with me as well to act as a waterproof but to be honest I didn't wear the poncho that much. I only wore it, there was one day where it rained and we had to take down the tent that was attached to our camper van so I just chucked the poncho over the top of me but apart from that I lived in my barber. Um, just do a full oh. Full 360 for you. Um, I think that's it for clothing. Oh, I can't talk about the Scotland trip without talking about my boots. I think my boots got more love than anything on that trip. So these were also bought from Go Outdoors, obviously. Not sponsored by Go Outdoors, by the way. We just have one right by our house. So when boot shopping, I wanted literally the most unassuming plain boot I could find. I didn't want any bright colours, I didn't want any bells and whistles, I just wanted something very, very minimal. And these high-tech ones were perfect. They are brown leather, brown laces, there's nothing, there's literally nothing to them. They're great. And when I posted about them, I had a few people message me saying they've got them as well and found them really, really comfy. And I can completely agree with those reviews. I didn't even bother like trying to wear them in or anything before the trip. The first time I wore them was the first day that we were in the camper van. And from the get go, they were so comfortable. I didn't get any blisters. They were really warm, really easy to walk in. I wore them with a thick pair of Uniqlo heat tech socks for most of the trip. And they were great, kept my feet warm. They're fully waterproof as well. Wore these on one day, one day it completely it was the same day we had to wear the mozzie nets actually. That day it rained and these got so muddy, they got so wet, but my feet were completely dry. I will link those below. But to be honest, I can't recommend most of these things enough. I will link everything below. Um, in terms of things that didn't really work, there wasn't anything specific that we took with us and didn't use, but I overpacked slightly. I tried to condense my packing as much as possible, but what I very quickly realised is I was living in pretty much a, the same combo of fleece, long sleeve top, leggings and my boots, or it was, uh, or I'd switch out the leggings for some shorts. And I took about three or four pairs of shorts with me and one pair of leggings. And what I should have done is taken one pair of shorts, a pair of leggings and a pair of jeans. There was no need for me to take multiple shorts. Probably could have done with maybe two pairs of leggings actually. That's what I'd recommend. Take a pair of jeans, two pairs of leggings and a pair of shorts. Might not even need the shorts this time of year, but we had a couple of nice days where the shorts um, came in handy. But yeah, just I overpacked thinking I was going to like change my outfits every day, but actually I was just more concerned with being warm and comfortable. And it was only, we were only in that camper van for six days, was it? So yeah, I pretty much wore the same thing nearly every day. Um, and that, I think, is it. I can't think of anything that was like really terribly awful. Like we didn't take anything that was like really, really rubbish and that we would never take again. The only thing was this, um, oh, I've got it here actually. It was a like a, a light that is supposed to zap mozzies and things. That was kind of pointless. Um, oh, one more thing that was really, really handy. A hot water bottle. Definitely, definitely take a hot water bottle with you. There was one evening where my leggings were in the wash, so I had to wear shorts and I was so cold. The hot water bottle really saved me that evening and just most nights it was really, really handy to have a hot water bottle. 
And I think that's it. That is all I wanted to talk about in relation to the Scotland trip. The one last thing I wanted to add, which um, I think as my audience, I don't think any of you would do this, but please, please, please make sure if you're going on a trip of this kind, take your rubbish with you. Do not leave anything behind. There were a few instances where we arrived at not so much the paid campsites, it was more the places where you would go free camping, uh, not free camping, sorry, wild camping. People had left rubbish behind and I, I just don't get it. I don't get why people do that because it's really, really not difficult to take your rubbish with you, especially when there's bins really close by. It's not difficult at all. So always, always aim to leave no trace when you're camping. It's not hard to take your rubbish with you and just double check when you do leave that you haven't left anything behind. We saw so many masks as well, which is really sad. I mean, I've seen masks around here where I live, but it was just really horrible to see them, I guess, in that context of like this, be this beautiful scene where you're just like full of wildlife and then just littered with masks. It was really um, shocking to see, I guess, but I had a few people message me just saying that like up in Scotland, they do have this problem with tourists is that they just leave their stuff behind. So yes, always, always strive to leave no trace whenever camping. And yeah, that is, I think that's it. I think that's enough. most Sunday of Sundays. It's very grey, it's feeling very autumnal all of a sudden, so my first instinct has just been to sit cosied up, lit all the candles and I've just done nothing for most of the day. But I have been sat preparing my bullet journal ready for October because it dawned on me that next week we will be in October, which is kind of scary. I can't believe as of next week there will literally only be three months left of 2020. So each month I set up my bullet journal so I can kind of see how the month's looking, get myself organised and I thought I'd show you. FYI my bullet journal isn't all pretty looking with lovely colour coordinated fonts and tapes and that kind of thing. When you go on Pinterest and type in bullet journaling, there is some incredibly, incredibly beautiful uh, pages on there. But for me, like I don't do anything like that. And actually, I don't necessarily follow the bullet journal system that I know a lot of people do. I The only thing that is bullet journally about what I do is that I use the bullet journal as in like the dotted journal. I don't follow any of the keys or anything like that that the original creators of the system came up with. Uh, so I will just show you what I do, what I have found works for me. So each month I take a double page spread and I set up my month. On this side I have the like a linear calendar. I number it from one to however many days there are in that month and then I put the days next to the numbers and then I just put in any key things that are happening that month. As you can see October's looking pretty sparse at the moment. I've got a work deadline at the beginning of the month, daylight savings ends on the 25th and I have a haircut on the 30th. Oh and obviously Halloween on the 31st. That might get busier, fingers crossed, but um, yeah I'd just like to be able to see there in a very clean line what's happening on each date 
So if someone says, what are you doing on such and such date, I can refer to this page and see very clearly. Then on this side, I split the page into four and use this space to set out, I guess, goals, anything I want to achieve that month, things I want to work on. So I split it into four categories, which often change each month, depending on the things I want to focus on. This month I've got finance, I've got work, I've got body and mind. Work and body and mind are the two categories that all I work on, I have every month. And then this one is life forward slash miscellaneous. In finance, that that's where, I haven't done finance just yet, but that's where I would put any savings goals, any maybe things I want to buy, just any financial things I want to work on that month. In work, I have got continue vlogging each week, manage and organise time better so I can be consistent with wardrobe review series. I have not been great with my time management that month, this um, this year, sorry, I was going to say this month. I have not been great with time management this year whatsoever. And I really want to get on top of that so I can feel more consistent with the content I'm putting out and just feel more organised in myself. Then body and mind, I've got get back into running and break the 10k barrier once a week because I haven't been running for two weeks now and I really miss it. And I would like to do a run, at least one run a week that is further than 10k because 10k was becoming quite a, I would just sort of like stop at 10k and then that would be it. So I really want to break, break that barrier. And I've put introduced strength training again, which will assist me in breaking the 10k barrier with much more ease. Read more and reduce screen time, or if on screen, read articles, not just scrolling. I feel like this is a this is a goal every single month is to reduce screen time. And I write it each month just as kind of a mental, not a mental note, like a, a physical on paper note so that each time I refer back to it, I'm like, okay, yeah, let's not spend loads of pointless time scrolling on your screen. And the final one in the body and mind category is go fully vegetarian because I am now at a point where I just think, yeah, there's nothing stopping me. It's really easy, so I'm just going to do it. And in life and miscellaneous, there is only one thing in there at the moment, and that is provisional license because I would really like to learn to drive by the end of this year. And I think learning to drive in three months is totally doable, but before I can get going, I need a provisional license, otherwise I ain't going anywhere, so I need to get that sorted. So that's how my planning of the month looks, and then I use page by page, I'll do a weekly plan. I'll try and find a week where there's been a good amount of jobs and things, because at the moment the weeks are looking quite sparse. Ah, the week before we went to Scotland will be quite a good one actually, because there was quite a few jobs. It's not very neat, it does look a bit chaotic. So at the top, I will put the week's date. So I've put, you know, this is the week of the 17th to the 23rd. Then I put any top tasks that need to be done that week. And then I will just uh, underline each day along with its date and just write what needs to be done on each of those days and tick them off as I go along. And I was quite good that week. I ticked off most of the lists. Uh, but you can see there's not really any, like, it's not neat or anything. There's not any, like, grids and lines and stuff. It is very, um, it's very messy. And, I, and I, I like to keep it that way. When I first started bullet journaling, I had the best intentions to make everything look pretty and neat. Had a lovely contents page when I first started. I had a, a year, oh, I had a year planner. I had a... I, have, I still use the pen log, I think I showed that recently, the pen log, very, very good one. I had a media page where I wrote down programmes I wanted to watch, programmes to recommend to other people. I had a wish list page. I had all sorts. I was even trying to colour code pages with uh, coloured washi tape. Uh, oh, this is quite a good one. Probably not applicable unless you're kind of in a creative industry, I guess. Oh, I don't know, you could probably apply this, but I set up a project tracker which I think I saw Anna Newton do. She's very organised so it wouldn't surprise me if I saw her do this and thought ah I'm gonna do that. So I write down all the projects I have and then 
uh, why is my mind gone blank? Then I tick off when it's been, when I've shot the imagery and edited them, when I've submitted them to the client, when I've then posted them or they've gone to whichever platform they need to go to. And then when I've followed up with the client and sent the insights and analytics and all that kind of thing, that was a very, very helpful one. That was 2019. I have set up a 2021 somewhere, but as you can imagine, it's not quite as full like pages of like video ideas people I need to arrange meetings with like I set off with the best intentions and then oh this is quite funny this was my 2020 year plan as you can see tails off in April uh, and that's the general sort of theme after that the bullet journaling didn't really uh I didn't really keep it up so yeah that's just what I do I thought that might be of interest to anyone who's like I struggle with a paper diary and I also struggle with keeping things organized digitally as well so I find that this method of organizing although this kind of looks messy it stops my brain from feeling messy because I just get it all out on the page um it is now half past four and I really want to get this vlog up this evening for you all to watch so I think it's best I sign off here thank you so much for watching I feel really good to be back, good to be back vlogging. I feel like this vlog's been a lot of me just sat talking to the camera, lots of catching up, so I do apologise if it's been a bit of a funny one. But yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.